Well, hello, hello again. Um, can't really see the viewfinder, so uh, <coughs> hopefully there's enough lighting on this video. But um, as usual, I've been uh, looking at some stuff that's been going on on uh, YouTube. I don't look at any of this other stuff, Twitter and Facebook and all that. But uh, having a look around YouTube, there's a few things been going on in the wonderful world of the ET fantasists, fanboys and piffle peddlers uh, that I thought would be worth commenting on, okay? So, uh, okay, and again in no particular order, I'll try and keep it sort of reasonably cohesive but uh, as I've said before, you know, I've, I've made these notes during the week and I don't get time to rewrite them and all that sort of stuff so you know, I don't spend time editing videos, I sit in front of the camera, point and shoot read the notes. Okay, so what do we have this week? Uh, this camera records in blocks of 30 minutes so I'll try and keep it less than 30 minutes so I don't have to join them up. Um, if I do I'll just have to make two videos. Okay, so uh, Danny Sheehan says there should be a countdown clock to October the 18th, <laughs> which uh, due to the NDAA, which is the, uh, I didn't make a note of that, I'll tell you what it is later, it was signed into law apparently last year and um, the uh, <coughs> everyone was given 300 days to produce everything they've got to Arrow, to the government, with, uh, with regard to UAPs and you know that sort of stuff. <coughs> anything older than 25 years is going to be released to the public, whether it's classified or not. So Danny Sheehan is on tender hooks because he's expecting the Roswell information to be released and for it to say it was an alien spacecraft that crashed in Roswell. This, of course, is complete and utter nonsense. You know, as I've said before, it's the, the, the guy that ran the Mogul Balloon program fell about laughing when he read the Roswell Daily Record because he knew it was balloon, Ros, it was Mogul Balloon String Number Four that had crashed on Brazel's ranch. If you read what Brazel had to say about what he found, you know, balsa wood sticks, rubber strips, <laughs> um, scotch tape. It's not an alien spacecraft. He said the whole thing, he could put the whole thing on his kitchen table, all the bits that he gathered up. So, you know, the, the whatever crashed at Roswell wasn't an alien spacecraft. Brazel said that he found it on June the 14th. So it had nothing to do with this big storm on July the 7th that brought down this alien spacecraft. As if an alien spacecraft would never have seen a storm before, you know. The Roswell story is complete and utter rubbish. No ET involvement. No extraterrestrials there at all. And I think um, Danny Sheehan should be saying you know, there should be a countdown clock. He's really excited, you know. It's on tender hooks. He's waiting for all this stuff to come out on October the 18th. I think it's actually October the 24th, although he said if you count 300 days, it's October the 18th. Fair enough, a few days. It's going to make no difference. But he's not going to find anything in the stuff that's released saying that E.T. has been here, that E.T. has ever been here because it's never happened. All this E.T. visiting Earth, crashing on Earth, as I've said before so many times, it's complete and utter rubbish. Um, so, you know, Danny Sheehan's really excited. No doubt he's at the uh, contact in the desert, this, this thing that's going on in America at the moment from, uh, was it the 30th of May to the 3rd of June? So it's on at the moment, it's on over this weekend couple of days either side or day either side of it and of course what they're not going to be contacting is ET and contacting each other I'll, I'll mention that a bit later on I made some notes about that um, so uh, so Danny Sheehan being on tender hooks you know waiting for all this stuff to be released should be a countdown clock in the corner he's wasting his time it's complete nonsense and saying, why isn't the, the uh, mainstream media, you know, grabbing onto this and showing a lot more interest in it? And the reason is, there's not a scrap of tangible evidence to show any of it's true, you know. 
If there was tangible evidence to show ET was coming here, the mainstream media would be all over it. And the mainstream media is not being controlled by governments or shady agencies, because if it was, we would have been told they'd found weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, you know, when America and Britain and the other countries went in there, oh dear, no WMD. If the media was being controlled, we would have been told they found them. Weapons of mass destruction, here they are, told you so. Didn't happen, because the media is not being controlled. Uh, now, I thought this was quite funny, actually. Uh, Gary Nolan is doing some backpedalling. <laughs> and I think the reason he's doing some backpedalling is because, <laughs> is because he, he got a phone call. He said he got a phone call. He was threatened. Now, I don't doubt he got a phone call. And it's from one of these people, probably someone in the secret UFO ET club, that said... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, Nolan said... <laughs> He got a phone call and someone said, watch what you're saying. Doesn't say who the person was, where the phone call come from. It would have come from the UFO fanboy club, you know, this secret club behind the scenes that's trying to keep all this nonsense together. And they would, and, and they would have said to him, watch what you're saying. So I don't doubt that. That's what Nolan said. The, the caller said, told him to watch what he was saying. And I think that the, the reason for that is that he appeared on this, uh, I think it was a UFO podcast, two or three weeks ago, saying that he had aliens at the bottom of his bed when he was a kid. His brother saw them too. The aliens were looking through the windows. The aliens were there for weeks on end. Now, in a more recent... <laughs> in a more recent video, he said, oh, when he was asked at the SALT conference, you know, what... what what his opinion of what, what, what was his opinion as with regard the ET coming here? He said, "Oh, they're coming here, you know, 100%. You know, it's just an opinion. I have no knowledge of ET coming here. I've never shaken hands or tentacles with an alien." Now, this would have been after the phone call, telling him to watch what he says. He said, "I'm not trying to get out of anything here," and of course he is. He's backpedalling like mad because only two or three weeks ago he was saying he had aliens at the bottom of his bed. He had an alien at the bottom of his bed when he was an adult, when he was just about to start his job as a professor at Stanford, telepathically talking to him in English. Didn't tell us what he said, what the alien said. So, you know, these people get carried away on these flights of fancy. And someone said to Nolan, you know, watch what you're saying. These stories of aliens at the bottom of the bed are destroying any credibility that we might have. And, uh, <coughs> as far as I'm concerned, none of them have any personal opinion. So, yeah, I think that's probably true. I think Nolan probably did get a phone call. Someone probably did tell him to watch, he was saying, watch what he was saying. <coughs> and I think they told him to watch what he was saying <coughs> because he was telling the, <coughs> telling the world he had aliens at the bottom of his bed. They were there for weeks on end. Another one, oh no, I'm not backpedalling. No, I don't have any personal knowledge of aliens, you know. It's just my opinion. He's never shaken hands or tentacles with an alien. But if they're bottom, aliens at the bottom of his bed and they're there for weeks on end, wouldn't he have tried to communicate with them? Wouldn't he have tried to shake a hand or a tentacle? <laughs> it's complete and utter rubbish, isn't it? It's nonsense. It's drivel. So now Nolan is backing away from that. Oh, it's just my opinion. I don't know as fact that they're here. Well, I think if that was me and I'd had aliens at the bottom of my bed, first of all, I would have asked what they wanted. <coughs> I would have just watched them for weeks on end. But I would have said, well, I had aliens at the bottom of my bed. I know they're here. I've seen them. They were looking through the windows. They were at the bottom of my bed. My brother saw them too. I wouldn't say, well, I don't know. It's just an opinion, you know. I don't know as fact that they're here. So, you know, I've said it before. <coughs> Personal opinion, put a line through Gary Nolan. It's no credibility there at all. When it comes to ET, aliens, that sort of stuff. Um, what else have we got here? So... As I said, extremely unprofessional, I don't edit this stuff, but I mean, it's only the, it's the message that's important. 
not the presentation, I think. I hope that wind is not blowing across the microphone. <coughs> Okay, so um, apparently Admiral Tim Galladay, Galladet, has been talking again. Uh, yes, he's he's convinced ET is here. He says, look at all the data. Look at who's saying again. Look at who's saying they're here. He was asked if he had any personal experience of ET biological or technological materials, and he said, oh no, no, I've just been told by by credible people that it's happening. How many times do we have to hear that? I don't know. I, I have no personal experience of any of this, but I'm told by credible people that it's happening. Who are these credible people? We may, I may not find them credible at all. And uh, he said he's got, uh, he's actually admitted that he has no personal experience, first hand experience, with ET materials, technological or biological materials. It's his opinion based on what he's been told by people he considers credible. That's Admiral Tim Galladay, Galladet. And he's the one that's standing in front of the Soul Foundation saying, oh, I know, we're interacting with several alien species. Well, he doesn't know that at all, does he? He might choose to believe that, but he doesn't know that. It's because someone he considers credible told him. This is nonsense. And uh, he, quotes, uh, he quotes a bit from um, Diana Pasolka's book, you know, this ex-NASA engineer who said that, uh, you know, they went out in the desert and he said this, 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 this alien spacecraft was, was most likely a donation, you know, because it's occurring to the dimmest of dimwits in the UFO ET piffle peddling business, the ET is not going to come here and crash. There has to be another explanation for an alien spacecraft to be in pieces all over the floor. It's a donation. Complete and utter rubbish. ET is not going to donate technology to us, technological or bio biological material to us to study. They're not going to help us get to them and potentially destroy them. It's ludicrous. Absolute rubbish. But uh, Tim Galladay also said that um, his daughter is a psychic. He believes in psych her psychic ability and all this sort of stuff. So I would say that Tim Galladay's critical thinking ability is limited. No such thing as psychic ability. Never been proven that psychic ability exists. James Randi had a billion dollars on offer for anyone that could prove psychic ability existed. No one ever won the money. No such thing as psychic ability. There's no such thing as remote viewing. Remote viewing. Tim Gallaudet, the retired admiral, believes that. He believes that this exists. He believes his daughter can do it. He believes these people that he thinks are credible, telling him E.T. is coming here. So I think if I heard the stories from these credible people, I would think they were not credible, personally. I would say, well, OK, <laughs> you're working on a flying saucer, show me. Now, there'd be no harm in showing me. You know, I could go on YouTube and make a video about it, say this guy took me and he showed me an alien spacecraft. <clears throat> no one would believe it. Well, where's the harm in that? <clears throat> there are no <laughs> alien spacecraft on Earth crashed, crashed, recovered, donated, or otherwise. It's nonsense. So, uh, this ex NASA engineer said that it was, it was a, I told um, Diana Pasolka that it was, it was a donation. Crashed alien spacecraft is a donation. Complete and utter rubbish. <laughs> Tim Gallaudet believes that. Believes in psychic ability. Has no personal experience of ET technological or biological materials. He said, oh, well, look at the videos that were released, you know, around the time of the Nimitz. 
None of those objects demonstrate, de de demonstrated operational parameters beyond what could be filmed by the F-18s. There was, there was no astonishing performances re uh, shown, well, recorded. You know, the Tic Tac, that was tracked for four minutes from that F-18. Four minutes! So, you know, all of this is nonsense. It's clutching at straws on the part of the E.T. fanboys. Um, I might have covered this before, but I can't remember. Um, Travis Taylor tells us he's an alien invasion expert. How many alien invasions has he thwarted? Perhaps you could let us know in the comments below, Mr. Taylor. How many alien invasions has he been involved with? Has he advised on? Because if the answer is zero, and I strongly suspect it is, he's, hard, he's hardly in a position to call himself an alien invasion expert, is he? Yet that's his claim. All these people are just nuts, you know? It's... <laughs> I mean, I've never had anything to do with alien invasions. I've never seen an alien invasion. I've never thwarted an alien invasion. Now, if I came on here and told you I was an alien invasion expert, well, what would you think? you think that mumbling's as nutty as a fruitcake, or as fruity as a nutcake, as Captain Kirk would say. <laughs> Not to Star Trek, one of my favorite films, that one, where they go back in time to get the whales. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Personal opinion. Put a line through Travis Taylor. It's rubbish. Nonsense. Uh, John Stewart is still peddling the pathetic rubber alien uh, interview, being real. Um, you know, he's apparently he's got a picture of this Victor, Bob Dean, of course. It's obviously a rubber alien. The, the vertical line with the green dot at the bottom is obviously an oscilloscope. It's out of shot. It's got an angle, a mirror, an angle. You can actually see it. You know, if you turn the brightness right up, you can see it. So it it's either a piece of glass or a mirror at an angle, so that the at an angle, you know, so that the the scope is off is out of shot, but it's reflecting the vertical line going up and down. It's ridiculous nonsense. Um, okay, back to uh, back to Danny Sheehan. That's what I say. It's a bit disjointed. Danny Sheehan has said uh, he would like to interview Bob Lazar. <laughs> and he's got an unbeatable polygraph machine, an unbeatable lie detector machine, stress test monitor thing. Uh, if it's infallible then why isn't it, uh, why wouldn't the results from that be accepted in a court of law? That's not infallible. People that believe what they're saying can beat those things. Psychopaths can beat those things because they don't, they don't care they've killed somebody. They don't, get, they don't sweat and get elevated heart rates when they're asked these questions. You know? That's why polygraph machines are not accepted in a court of law. They are fallible. So Danny Sheehan does not have an infallible lie detector. Um, but he would like to interview Bob Lazar, put him on this, put him on this lie detector. <laughs> I wonder if Danny Sheehan has put David Grush on the lie detector. Or Lou Elizondo on the lie detector. Or Eric Davis on this super duper lie detector. Or Hal Putoff on the super duper lie detector. Perhaps if you watch this Mr Sheehan, you might consider that. Do it live, do it live on YouTube. Get them all sitting in chairs. One by one, get them to come up, ask them questions about recovered alien materials, technological and biological materials. Ask them if they've worked on any of this stuff, on this infallible lie detector. And let's, <laughs> let's see what the results are. It'd be good to see Danny Sheehan connected to this machine. And then someone could ask him about going down in this deep, deep, dingy basement and seeing this picture of an alien spacecraft sticking out of the ground at 45 degrees typical science fiction move, scene from a science fiction movie. Look at a plane crash. There's debris scattered all over the place, you know. You never see planes sticking out of a, an embankment of 45 degrees because they, when they've crashed here. 
you know. <laughs> yeah, it's fairly typical. The flying saucer sticking out of a bank at an angle of 45 degrees and people milling around it. You know, it's, it's fabricated rubbish. You know, a your spacecraft's not going to crash. If it did, it would make a hell of a mess. It wouldn't be sticking out of a bloody ground at 45 degree angle. Complete and utter rubbish. So, uh, oh yeah, Stephen Greer as well. It'd be good to see Stephen Greer on the infallible uh, lie detector as well. So Stephen Greer, Lou Elizondo, you know, David Grush, Eric Davis, Hal Pullock, all the usual suspects, Carl Nell maybe, uh, all on this super duper lie detector test. That'd be a great show. Live on YouTube, I'm all sitting in chairs, you know, one by one they come up and be interviewed by someone that's going to ask them real questions, not some <laughs> not someone's going to ask them soft questions for as a PR exercise to peddle this ET rubbish. You know, Danny Sheehan said that when he when he went to uh, he was in an unoccupied office. You know, there's a couple of people checked his credentials at the door, and he had to go down into a dimly lit basement. There's a couple of guys in there that said, hey, "It's a desk covered in this information. Sift through it. Look at what you like." Why do deep dark secrets have to be in deep dark basements? It was an unoccupied building. Why didn't they just take him into an office on the first floor and say, there you go, have a look at that. Straight out of the X-Files. Dark basement. Because it's a dark secret. Personally, I don't believe it. Be good to see Dan. <laughs> Personal opinion. Put, put Danny Sheehan on his super duper lie detector machine and ask him about that. Ask him if he believes the machine is actually infallible while he's connected to the machine. <laughs> oh dear. Got about five minutes to go before I'd have to make another video, so let's squeak the rest of this in. Yeah, so Danny Sheehan this weekend is um, at the contact in the desert, you know, where they get all the piffle peddlers together and they listen to their science fiction stories. No one's going to be presenting any evidence. I had a look at the, um, the list of speakers there and you couldn't pay me enough money to go there and sit in front of that lot for, three, for five days. It's just nonsense. None of it is worth listening to, you know. He should take his super duper lie detector machine up on the stage at the contact in the desert and then get all the presenters one by one to do a very very quick session on there ask them about the core claims of their presentations whilst they're connected to the super duper lie detector machine why not do that Mr Sheehan Um, I had a quick look at the, uh, the, the list of presenters. There's no one from Skinwalker Ranch there, surprisingly. <laughs> Grush isn't there. Elizondo's not there. No Greer, no Nell. No Admiral Gadadet. <laughs> no Eric Davis, no Hal Putoff. Dolan and his wife is there. Yeah, he always, anything he can cash in on, Dolan will jump on. Spruik in his usual science fiction rubbish. Oh, there's evidence for 17 crash retrievals. Yeah. Well, show us some tangible evidence for one, Mr. Dolan. Just one. Tangible evidence for just one ET crash retrieval. Craft crash retrieval. And he sits in front of that. Oh, yeah, there's good evidence for 17. Yeah, right. His wife, of course, remote viewer. No such thing. Remote viewing. No such thing as remote viewing. Nick Pope's going to be there. Well, <laughs> you know the luminaries like uh, Travis Walton. You know the lumberjack. If you're going to cross the galaxy, you know, and you and you and you're going to um, abduct someone and ask them all the secrets of the of the Earth people, you're going to abduct a spotty. What is he, 20 year old lumberjack? <laughs> the boss of his lumberjack crew quite recently said it was all fabricated because Travis was a UFO nut, he loved reading all about it, he wanted to stage an abduction and see if he could make any money out of it. That's Travis Walton. 
Whitley Strieber again, you know. Oh, that's what I think happened to me. Well, you know, if you think that's not what happened to me, you tell me what happened to me. That's Whitley Strieber. You know. <laughs> Science fiction writer. Put a line through it. It's rubbish. Personal opinion. None of these people are credible. George Knapp <coughs> and Linda Moulton Howe. Linda Moulton Howe repeat any old rubbish as truth, you know. Spartan 1 told me this. Anonymous source told her there's a big pyramid under Antarctica, you know. And she's repeating it as truth. Put a line, I put a line through LMH, Stephen Greer, Nat Corbell, oh, ages ago. None of these people, in my opinion, my personal opinion, are credible. They're not worth listening to. Actually, Corbell's not there either, is he? Um, so none of those people are worth listening to. You couldn't pay me to go and listen to them, let alone paying lots of money to go and listen to these people. This whole thing, Contact in the Desert, it's just, it's a science fiction convention. Well, maybe that's how it's put forward. Now, something that is worth mentioning, Congressman Garcia has submitted three amendments to next year's NDAA. Now, that's the National Defence Author Authorisation Act, the NDAA, OK? And the only bit that's worth mentioning, really, is that um, it relates to Arrow having access to uh, material he wants and he wants a civilian re re review board of nine people. I think this is a mistake, to be honest. A civilian review board of nine people to decide what's going to be released to the public. Uh, most people don't give a damn about aliens and all they don't think it's rubbish. Um, there's a core of people that have an interest in it. And you don't want any fanboys among this team of nine, do you, really? Because they're going to be saying, oh, this balloon's real and, you know, uh, you don't want that. It's going, it's going to attract UFO ET fanboys, fangirls. I think that is a mistake, getting nine members of the public as some kind of review board for this thing. Anyway, what he does say that's worth having in there is... <coughs> so what you've got to bear in mind, you get nine people off the street, you know, they're fanboys, fangirls, you're going to be dealing with people that see aliens at the bottom of their bed when they're a kid, you know, or they're looking through the windows. They're not credible people. <laughs> but he said the amendments do say he wants the government to have eminent domain. Ah, oh, it's gone over 30 minutes. Damn it. Over any and all recovered technologies of unknown origin. So he wants, now this is for the NDAA for next year. If this gets passed, it will be the, in, it, in the, in the uh, National Defence Authorisation Act, it will be written into law for next year. So he wants the government to have eminent domain over any and all recovered technologies of unknown origin. Any technological or biological material of non-human intelligence that may be controlled by private persons or entities, should they exist. So, if any ET biological or technological material exists, and he doesn't know that it does, because he's saying if it exists, um, it should be... <coughs> uh, <coughs> the government should be given eminent domain over it, so it should be surrendered to the government. It'll be the, it'll be the ownership of the government. The, the government will own that. Um, uh, that's, the, that's the nuts and bolts of his, there's a lot of stuff in there as well that's not really relevant, re relating to UAP and this, that. As I've said before, separate UAP from the ET. To get to the bottom of this, that's, that, this is the only bit you need. You need... <laughs> the government to have eminent domain over any and all recovered technologies That, that are technological or biological evidence of non-human intelligence, NHI. That's all you need. You can forget the rest of it. 
because we're not interested in UAPs and UFOs. We know they exist. We know it's adversarial, terrestrial um, technology. You know? And that's always going to be secret, how it's tracked, how it's monitored, how it's measured. It's always going to be classified. Get that out of the equation altogether. ET material only. Who has non-human intelligence related materials? Biological or technological materials? Alien materials? Forget the rest of it, we're not interested in that. And submit those to Arrow for investigation. Submit them to the government for investigation. Um, so that's it. It's, it's overrun, unfortunately, so I'm gonna, probably going to have to join this up. And that was... Uh, I've lost a bit of paper now. So who was that? That was Senator somebody or another, Congressman someone or another. Yeah. Yeah, OK, I've lost a bit of paper now. But I'm pretty sure he's a congressman or a senator or something, that, uh, that particular chap, that uh, wants to put that amendment into the, uh, the NDAA for next year. And that's the only bit we need to be interested in. It's the only bit that needs to get passed. Because if it is passed, then it will be discovered very quickly that there's no ET uh, presence here on Earth. There never, there never has been. Even if you take the eminent domain part out of it, you know, so the government can't own it, then these people won't have excuses for not presenting it. So it might be a mistake, actually. So that's probably the two mistakes that are in there. The eminent domain and the nine-person uh, civilian just taken at random from the public, uh, sort of a jury, if you like, as to, as to what should be... What was that what should be shown to the public, was that? And I'll just leave you with a final thought, and that is that um, I'll just remind you again that Danny Sheehan says there should be a countdown clock to the 18th of October because he's expecting, because this is this stuff that's going to be released, what they've said is anything older than 25 years, classified or not, it's going to be released to the public. And he's fully expecting there the Roswell story to be real. He's fully expecting a number of these other historical UFO crash rec recovery cases to be real. And he's going to be seriously disappointed. And so are all the other fanboys, Bassett, you know, all these other people. They're going to be seriously disappointed. They're going to be jumping up and down saying, oh, it's a cover-up, it's all controlled, you know, when it isn't. They can't say anything else. Because if they were to say, OK, uh, yeah, all right, well, I I'll believe it, you know. If it's not there, it's not there, you know. If Roswell was a mogul balloon, it was a mogul balloon. They're never going to admit that, because as soon as they do, there's no contact in the desert conferences, you know, how much are the tickets for that? You know, television programs, books, you know, speaking fees, other um, science fiction conferences. I'll call them that. <laughs> you know, the Soul Foundation. Science fiction conference. You know, it's not, it doesn't relate to anything real. And uh, that Tim Admiral Gadudet, apologies Admiral, terrible with French names, uh, <clears throat> was saying that the, that the Soul Foundation, I've mentioned this before too, it's trying to get together this master's course. You know. There's a master's course about UAP. What are they going to teach? You know. That's not really a balloon, that's an alien spacecraft in this image, you know. Got another fuzzy image here. All these images of alien spacecraft are fuzzy because aliens are fuzzy. That's just how they look. Is that what they're going to be teaching? It's all complete and utter rubbish until proven otherwise with tangible evidence. People are getting sick of it, you know? Sick and tired of all this. People have t credible people have told me, so I'm repeating it as truth. People are sick and tired of that. People want to hear it from the horse's mouth. They want to see tangible evidence that it's actually happening. Otherwise, put a line through it. It's science fiction piffle peddling. All right, well, now it's going because I've got an antique computer, it's going to take forever to join these two bits up now. This has become my favourite hat. I've got to be careful. I don't want to wear it out, you know, because it's, uh, you can't get these anymore. 
I bought this, you know, merch when the film came out in 1980, I think it was. If you struggle through the video all the way to this point, as usual, many thanks for watching. Maybe I'll catch you again.